All right. So a couple things I want to point out real quick. Um, here's another nifty thing you can do on your. Oops, I'm muted. Um, here's another nifty thing you can do on your calculator. So um, say I have. Um, and you might get this on your homework. You won't get it on the exam, but you might get it on the homework where you have nasty numbers with decimals, or you have a lot of numbers, like six or seven or eight or more. Oh, whoops. I'm so sorry. Let's try this again. Is that better? Yeah. Okay, great. Sorry. Thank you so much. Um, so this is, in your homework, is another neat thing you can do with your calculator. Um, if you say you don't have, your, your homework might give you decimals, like these numbers in decimals, which are kind of a pain, or they might give you um, a lot of numbers, like 10 or 12 or 14, that you have to work, work out. So you can just do this instead. Here's one neat trick. You can just put them in. So stat, edit, and, I, and I'm going to put in the list one, I'm going to put in my numbers. So what do I have here? I had um, 189. 173, 183, 180, and, whoops, 180, and something else, 70, 179. And then, on the other part, I had, oh, 185, 175, 180, 178. Great. Now double check and make sure your numbers are correct before you do anything else. And then the beauty of it is, watch this. This is really cool. I can go over here. So I'm in L3. You guys see where I'm on L3? And notice how the, how the, the um, marker the, is on, not on L3 itself. It's in front. It's on the first list spot cursor up so that my cursor is on L3 itself. So L3 is the one that's dark. Now, I want to do all of L2s minus L1. So I can do second one for L1. You can see it pop in here. Minus second L2. L second two, that gives me L2. And that's I have to be in the L3, so my cursor has to be on the L3. The dark part has to be on there. If I hit enter, it'll subtract them for me. Boom, just like that. Now I have them. Now you want to do stat calc one bar stat, not on list one, but on list three. So second L3, where all those differences is. And then I'll give you your 3.2 and your 11.4. So again, stat edit. Put the first group into list one, the second group into list two. You have to go. You have to go um, so that your cursor is not on this spot. It has to be on the L3 itself. So cursor up, and then do second L1 minus second, and then the L2 spot. Enter, and then I'll give it to you. Just don't forget that. Make sure that you the differences are in list three. So don't go doing that. Calc one of our stats of list one. It's got to be list three now. So that's kind of a neat thing to, to another option for you guys. Um, same thing. Same thing. Should work exactly the same. That should not change at all. Yeah. Um, okay. So um, let's talk a little bit about the project part five. First of all, I only have like six minutes left here. Um, these, these are the, the um, videos that we did when we went through in class on these. They're still up. If you go to my, if you go to my playlist on YouTube, you get a project, which is you got to kind of hunt for it because it's kind of far down now. Um, but um, this one right here, 6.3 Evening Part 3, Project Lab 5. And this one here, those are the ones where I talk about them and how to do them. Make sure you skip minutes 2 to two, two to three, 3 30 because that's just about printing and we, you guys aren't printing so you don't need to worry about that. Um, but this is it right here. Um, go to the YouTube playlist project that will get you to those videos. And then this is all about your quantitative data. So the, the quantitative, the numerical data. 
So you had two numerical questions. We're focusing on just those two for this part of the pro for this project. You're going to find the average. Um, you're going to find. Oh, I didn't. I don't have it really. Oh, I guess I closed it. Um, you're going to find the mode, the median, the um, standard deviation. You're going to find the Q1 and Q2. I talked about those in the video. Um, and then you have two pages about printing. So the first two pages are going to follow those directions. Pages three is, page three is just about the printing, so you can ignore that one. Um, page four is a blank page. But pages five and six are the ones you need to fill out. Um, and you can use, instead of creating a histogram, you do not have to create a new histogram. You can just use the frequency polygon from part three, from your project part three. You can just use that instead. So you don't have to do a new histogram. Just use a frequency polygon. That's fine. Um, again, that's in, you did that in, um, in your part three of this project. And then this No, 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 no. You, you, you emailed me these. So these two sheets, you're going to email me. Yeah, so the project, you'll email me your Excel spreadsheet, not a PDF. I can't do anything with a PDF. I need the actual Excel spreadsheet or a link to your Google Sheets. Okay, so don't save it as a PDF. I can't, like I said, I can't work a PDF. I need the actual Excel spreadsheet or your Google, the link to your Google Sheets. Um, and then... And then you're going to take pictures of these two last pages and you're going to email me these two. You can do that from your phone if you want. Just take a picture from your phone and email me these two. Um, and I talked about a little bit about how to do these things here already. I talked about those ones and counting them. Chevy Chevs, um, you're going to find the percent. So you've counted how many are within this range. And say I had 112 that were from you know, whatever the, that range was from here to here. And so I'd find the fraction as a percent. So 112 out of 154, that's 72.7%. And see if that meets Chevy Chevs. It doesn't, because Chevy Chevs, it says at least 75%, at least 75%. So it could be, could be 100%, it could be 80%, it could be 90%, it could be 75%, but it has to be more than, more than this, it has to be 75% or more. So that this would not fall under Chevy Chevs, which means that this is really impossible. I just made these numbers up on the fly, which is why they're impossible. They don't exist. It's not possible to do that. But at any rate, so you're, you should follow Chevy Chevs because otherwise something has wrong, happened wrong in the world. And then empirical rule. Empirical rule says if it's normal, then this should be about 68%. This should be about 95%. This should be about 99.7%. So tell me whether or not you think your data could be normal based upon whether or not you hit these guidelines, whether this is about 68, 95, and 99.7. Um, and then asking other questions about comparing your mean and your median, which you did on your, on your um, Excel sheet, and see if they're about the same or if the mean is lower or if the mean is higher. And then, whichever one you did, does that mean that you're normal, right skewed, or left skewed? So circle, whichever one you circled here should match up with one of these things there, just to kind of make sure you understand what the idea of right skewed, left skewed is. And that's in your chapter 6.1 notes. And then you do not have to make a histogram. You can just use your frequency polygon. So ignore that, make that part. Um, but compare that, look at your frequency polygon, and see if you think it's approximately normal or left skewed or right skewed or other. And that's it. Just send me those two pages. All right, any other questions? Otherwise, we'll call it quits for the day, and I will see you guys on Thursday. Questions, questions? Yeah. Angela, go. No? Adam, question? Okay. All right. I have a question. Yes. So after this lab, we have one more, right? Lab 10? Yes. After this, we're only going to have lab 10, and that's it. Okay. Yeah. You guys are, we're, we're, and you guys are working hard. It's really hard to learn in this environment. So all the things that I can cut, I'm going to cut out of the class so we have less material to cover. Okay.